Welcome to the Financial Flossing Podcast with Ross Brannan, guiding dental professionals to a brighter future. Ross Brannan is a financial advisor who knows it's not just about your teeth. He helps dental practice owners protect and maximize today's cash flow to plan for tomorrow's cash needs. Find him at rossbrannan.com. On the show, he brings together experts to help dental professionals looking to make smart money decisions to grow their income, turn their retirement goals into reality, and improve their lives. And now, here's your host, Ross Brannan. Welcome to the show. My guest today is Kirsha Campbell. Kirsha is the virtual CFO of the Cash Lab, which provides accounting services as well as a number of of other financial advisory services for business owners, from business foundation setup to cash flow forecast to monthly reviews. She and her team at the Cash Lab help business owners in many professions. But today we're going to be talking about, you guessed it, dentistry. Kirsha, thank you for coming on to share your expertise with us. Thank you for having me, Roz, and all that you're doing in this whole world of you know supporting dentists because it's such a critical work that you're doing financial flossing. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Now, for those of you who don't know, Kirsha is based in Canada, but she has clients in both the US and Canada. And if you're wondering where in Canada, you can see the map standing behind her. At the very, 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 very top of the map is the North Pole. And that's about how far north as she is. I'm, te- I'm teasing, of course. I was giving her a hard time. She's right outside Edmonton, Alberta where she was trying to justify where minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit was not that bad. And I told her that she needs to see a psychiatrist after, <laughs> after a comment like that. Anyway, she has clients in Canada. She has clients in the U.S. She can help everyone everywhere. So, Kirsha, let's get started. How did you get started accounting and what made you want to create the cash lab? I got started in accounting very early, I would say from... I was growing up because I'm the only girl and a lot of times I was supporting my mom, managing the home, the finances. So I got, actually got started unofficially from growing up. However, when I introduced to the subject in high school, it was like um, a, just an instant match, an instant connection. So I pursued further studies, got my designation, and I've been working for over 15 years. So that is a you know, snapshot of my journey to be an accountant. Mm-hmm. Well, that's interesting. So you're known as the cash flow maven. Where did that name come from? When I thought, I, okay, so just a quick background. I was in corporate working and I realized that, you know, I had clients on the side. I realized that a lot of the clients, small to medium sized business owners in various professions, various organization industries, they struggled with areas on the financial side. They were great at their expertise, but there was that struggle. So I realized the need to support them to prevent businesses from going bankrupt and so forth. So the name the Cash Lab is birth from a lab. In the lab, there's so many different concoctions, different formulas customized for whatever the output that is needed. So that's the Cash Lab. No business is the same, customized services, strategies. Got it. Now, your website mentions that the key steps to having a recession-proof business is systems and cash flow. I like to say that cash flow is king. I say cash flow is the foundation of any personal or business uh, financial world. How do you help businesses specifically reach that equal equilibrium? So one of the first steps we do is a gap assessment. We find out what's the strengths of the business, what are the loopholes, where's money leaking from, what is really happening. Of course, tying that to the goals of the company, the business owners. So when we've understand what the gaps are, we've understood that the next step is to now get change systems. Systems are very important. Do you have a system to collect monies, right? Do you have a systems where a system where you follow up on patients who book but they didn't show up? Do you have a system to test, okay, you know, what's the treatment plan? What's the acceptance rate? So you need a system to track everything that's happening in your business to be more efficient and effective as well. So systems do form the base of any company and from your systems, it's going to flow to cash flow. And I, I see that in the personal, on the personal side that a cash flow system is absolutely critical. Uh, expenses rise to meet income. So whenever money shows up in the account, it gets spent. 
Um, <laughs> so you've written a book called Poised Profitable. Talk a little bit about, about that book. So that was an exciting project I co-authored with um, some other ladies and anthology, my era was focusing on business risk. Because what I do find is that a lot of times businesses are risky and they don't realize. So it's not about the venture that you're doing. It's also about how you're operating day to day. For example, in your dentist practice, are you relying on, for, for example, a certain company for most of your patients? Or you might have a huge company, you know, and you're saying, okay, you have that contract. That is a risk because if something goes down and that company several size, where does that leave your practice? So it's understanding the different levels of risk. There are financial risks, um, information technology risks. There's so many risks that exist in the business. So that was what I did focus on because that, again, will lead to you not having that cash that you need in your bank account. So when you start working with a client, what is typically the most common advice you end up giving to them? The common advice is always to understand your numbers, understand what's happening in your business. So a lot of times persons rely on their bank account, especially if they're cash rich. They might say, I don't have a bank overdraft, so I don't have a problem. However, that is not a true indicator of what is happening in your business. So it's more than that. It's more than having cash in your bank account. It's diving deeper. What is the flow of cash? Cash coming in, cash leaving. What does that look like? Because if you have certain gaps and weaknesses in the flow, then ultimately you're not going to see monies in your bank account pretty soon. So usually we start from helping them to understand their business numbers. It can be overwhelming, but of course we take it step by step and break it down. Yeah, I find that very few people understand their cash flow. It's, um, mm-hmm. you know, an example I like to give is if someone walks in and they make $300,000 net, just to use that example, that's $25,000 a month. And if their expenses are $15,000 a month, obviously they should be saving $10,000 a month, $120,000 a year. And those are real numbers that people have given me. And I'll say, so you've got $120,000 in savings. And they'll look at me like I'm an alien. And I'm like, then your burn rate is more than $15,000. They have no, people have no idea. And so, and I find most people don't really want to get into their, get into the weeds personally, uh, just because life, life happens, life's busy, the other stuff going on. So a system is absolutely critical on the personal side as much as the business side. Yeah, I so agree. I get that from my clients too. I mean, this amount of profit, where's, why is it not in the bank account? And then again, it's diving into that analysis to let them understand that profits are different from cash flow. It's just like you have an orange and a lemon, they're both citrus fruits. However, if you add them to certain meals, certain salads, the flavor is different, right? So in the same way, profits and cash flow, they are important. However, the ultimate measure is cash flow in your business. Do you guys have oranges and lemons in the tundra up there? <laughs> Yes, we do. I mean, You're gonna have to come and visit. I, I mean, I know it's I know it's like ice sheets eleven months a year up there. So I didn't know if oranges and fruits and, and lemons ever made it up there. So I mean, anyway, I'm kidding. So talk about the 39 day journey that you do with the cash lab. So that is step by step process for you to really get your business, your company to that level of, you know, being efficient, effective, of being profitable, and of course, having cash flow. So we take it step by step. Some of the key things we do along that journey is understanding your business numbers. For example, key performance indicators, right? Understanding what you use to test and measure your business. So for example, in the whole dentist world, you know, what are the main sources of you getting, you know, clients, is it from internal referrals? What is that percentage? What about treatment plan? How many are those being accepted monthly, right? Getting into the average production per hour. A lot of times dentists, I do know, they are going about their practice and there's so many loopholes. There's so many opportunities for, you know, 
getting better, doing better, like understanding how much is my rent? Am I paying too much for rent supplies? Are we paying too much on supplies? What about the team? Are we paying them too much? Do Are we understanding our numbers? So that is a key thing, key metrics. And also we talk about also on that journey, the importance of having your team involved. I cannot overemphasize that having your team members involved. I mean, you're not going to divulge everything, but enough so they are on board with this journey to scaling your business to more cash and more profits. So how painful is a process of a process is that for most people? I mean, you, that makes you like get all warm and fuzzy, but some people are like, (laughs) I just can't do that. I mean, if you're not wired, like you're wired, how do you get them to go through that process? Because it's a pretty detailed process. It's a pretty important process. It is. So I like to use the analogy of exactly how important it is. That's usually the first angle we go from. So I have twin boys and we've had to do several surgeries from they were born. And I've never once thought of going on Google and performing these surgeries myself. I'm getting the best expert, getting the best support. So in the same way, what about your dentist practice? How important is it? Is it important enough that it's overwhelming, it can be scary, but I'm willing to take those baby steps to do better. You know, it's helping them to understand that there are benefits from this, financial benefits, your bank account grows, <laughs> your business, your dentist practice is more stable. So helping them first to understand the importance of it. And then we take baby steps moving at their own pace. Of course, whatever their goals are, we're incorporating those as well. So yeah. What what would you say that most clients don't ask you that they should be asking you? One of the key, one of the things they don't ask is was everything done so I can pay less taxes legally. <laughs> A lot of times persons they're like this is my tax bill it has to be this way but it doesn't have to be that way. There are deductions credits legally that will reduce your tax bill. So a lot of times Persons are not asking that question. It's a very simple but powerful question that you should ask. So we've talked a lot about cash flow because cash flow is critically important. What other things do you do to help your clients out? So I also help them to understand the importance of their operations, how your operations is set up, systems. So when you think about it, you know, your team, how is it? What's the morale of your team, right? Having that open communication so that your team is on board with what's happening, right? Asking them key questions. Where do you need support? Sometimes you have your team, they're struggling and we don't have that communication. So, you know, they're left, you know, just out in the open. So understanding the importance of your team, getting them on board and involved as well. Another thing too is understanding the importance of where do you really want your business practice to go, your dentist practice? Where do you want to go with it? Do you plan to sell it in another five years? Do you plan to turn it over to your kids or do you plan to open other locations? So having the end in mind, what is your goal? So getting into succession plan, I find a lot of times that is not taken into consideration and that impacts all your decisions from now. Yeah, that's really interesting. That That's really interesting. So, you know, for someone who doesn't really understand what a virtual CFO might do. So I live in Florida. You live in uh, Alberta, mm-hmm. just south of Edmonton, this side of, you know, the North <laughs> Pole. Uh, um, and you're going to visit soon. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd love to get frostbite. Sounds great. Uh, but um, what is that like for someone who's like, how, how would I do, how would I use a virtual CFO? What is that process like? So basically that process is customized. So if it's a case where you have never had any eyes on your business, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to ensure that your foundation is solid, is correct. So something like, for example, your chart of accounts or your transactions are grouped. If that is wrong, you might be paying more taxes. So we ensure that the solid, the foundation is set up, you're positioned to be profitable, your operations, your chart of accounts, how your financial numbers, your system, your financial system, how is that set up software? So we look at the basis, the foundation first. After that is set up, then we're able to now dive deeper, what I call looking beyond the numbers um, to assess what is happening in your business. So we dive into things like, are you having too much cost, right? For example, 
you know, what about broken or canceled operations? There's a cost to that. Everything that happens in your business ultimately impacts your cash flow in a positive or a negative way. So we dive into setting up weekly scorecards where we assess what is really happening in your business production schedule, right? And looking at continuing care costs, you need to have a flow. How are you going to keep getting your patients in? How are you going to keep that flow of patients coming back to your dentist's office? So we dive into all those areas. So it's getting into the foundation first, and then the foundation is set, is solid. How can we now scale, increase your cash flow, increase your profits, pay less taxes? So it's a 360 degree view of your business ultimately. That sounds great. Um, Let me kind of shift gears here in the last couple of questions. I'm a big reader. What books have you read recently that are good or what would you recommend somebody else read from a business perspective or any perspective? One of my favorite books is Grit. It's by Angela. I oh, forgot fan- Grit's Face. fantastic. Angela Duckworth, yes, fantastic. Yes. And I keep always not pronouncing her surname properly. So that is a powerful book because it's one of my go back to books because there are times when you want to give up, right? Life, ha- I'm not going to say life happens because life is always happening. But for whatever reason, you're like, I can't take that next step. Or is it really going to be worth it? So that book has helped me to remember, at especially down times, that I can keep going. I can take that next step. It's worth it. It's also not only about me. It's about those who I'm serving, Right. A business saved impacts families, generations to come, the economy. So it's really diving into those low points, not discounting them, but accepting that they are happening and just moving on. So that has been one of my really go-to books. (laughs) Fantastic. Now, last question. What's the best advice you ever received? One of the best advice I received was from my mom. Early on growing up, she always says, you know, always find something to be thankful for. And it's something that I keep going at. I teach it to my little ones too, that despite what's happening, remember that there's always something to be thankful for. It's like we're in the middle. There's always somebody ahead of us or in a worse off situation. So just find opportunities to be thankful. Make it, it's not easy sometimes, but if you constantly, you know, push yourself, what can I really be thankful for then? you find that there's, you know, things you can always be thankful for. And I'll quickly add, be kind. There, you know, we always have that choice to be kind. There's so much meanness in the world, but just choose to be well, kind. I would tell you if you're thankful and you're practicing thankfulness, you're typically, you are, you are kind. Yeah. If typically, that's the case. So how can people get in touch with you if they want to reach out to you? So definitely, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on social media as Kersha Campbell. You will also find me as a cash lab on an Instagram and, you know. What, what's your website? Yes, www.thecashlab.ca. Pretty simple. <laughs> so yes, www. Are, yeah, www. Dot .ca yeah. Is, the, is the Canadian uh, part of the internet, just in case you're unfamiliar with that. So mm-hmm. cashlab.ca. Yes, www.thecashlab.ca. Oh. And I'm on LinkedIn too. All right, that, fantastic. That's great. So, well... Kirsha, this has been absolutely fantastic. I'm so thankful you didn't like freeze me out on this Zoom call. I'm so glad, <laughs> so thankful that Zoom is weatherproof. Uh, yes. Uh, um, and so it's like, it's already snowing there apparently. So it's, uh, which is insane, um, but it's been, it's been really fun. It's been a lot, it's been very interesting and people will get a lot out of this. So thank you so much for your time today. And thank you so much for having me too. I really appreciate it. And it was fun. (laughs) Yes. Now you've been listening to the Financial Flossing Podcast with Ross Brennan. We'll see you next time. This has been another episode of Financial Flossing with Ross Brannan, guiding dental professionals to a brighter future. If you liked what you heard, consider subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. For more on Ross Brannan, visit rossbrannan.com. Registered Representative and Financial Advisor of Park Avenue Securities, LLC, PAS, OSJ, 3664 Coolidge Court, Tallahassee, Florida, 32311, 850-562-9075. Securities products and advisory services offered through PAS, member FINRA, SIPC. Financial Representative of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, Guardian, New York, New York. 
PAS is a wholly owned subsidiary of Guardian. North Florida Financial is not an affiliate or subsidiary of PAS or Guardian. California Insurance License Number 0L10073. Arkansas Insurance License Number 16139032. 2021 1195.35. Expires. 423. That last part can also say 2021 119535, expiration April 2023. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Guest speakers and their firms are not affiliated with or endorsed by PAS, Guardian, or North Florida Financial, and opinions stated are their own. Ross is a registered representative and financial advisor of Park Avenue Securities, LLC, PAS, OSJ, 3664, Coolidge Court, Tallahassee, Florida, 32311, 850-562-9075. Securities, products, and advisory services... Offered through PAS, member FINRA SIPC, financial representative of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, Guardian, New York, New York. PAS is a wholly owned subsidiary of Guardian. North Florida Financial is not an affiliate or subsidiary of PAS or Guardian. Arkansas Insurance License Number 16139032, California Insurance License Number 0L10073. 2021 128776, expiration 1023.